When you fill up your grocery cart with fruits and vegetables, you're doing something that's really good for yourself. Those things are full of nutrients. But for two decades, there's been a report out about the dirty dozen. These are the 12 fruits and vegetables that have the most pesticides on them. And the list warns you against eating them. There's a continual debate about whether or not you should follow that list. And in this program, I'm going to have a close look at the Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen is a list that's published by the Environmental Working Group, the EWG. They're dedicated to promote organic fruits and vegetables. So they put this list together that warns you about the pesticides on non-organic food. The first list came out in 2004 and the report was called The Shopper's Guide to pesticides on produce. Every year since then has produced a new list, the Dirty Dozen. And now we have the Dirty Dozen for 2025. The EWG gets their data from government testing. The U.S. Department of Agriculture and the EPA test hundreds of different fruits and vegetables every year for pesticide content. And what they do is they treat the food the same way you do at home. So if they're testing an apple, they would wash it under running water for a few seconds, just like you do at home, and then test it. This data is publicly available, and the EWG uses it to create its list. The list for 2025 is out, and here's what's on the list. Finish, strawberries, kale, grapes, peaches, cherries, nectarines, pears, apples, blackberries, blueberries, potatoes, peppers, and green beans. Now you might note that the list of 12 has become the list of 14, and it's quite common for them to add a few extras on the list. In addition to the list, here's some other things they had to say. A total of 203 pesticides were found on the dirty dozen. Pesticides were found on 96% of the sample, and that includes all 12 of the ones on the list. Every item, except potatoes, had an average of four or more pesticides detected on the sample. Potatoes had two on average. Topping the list on the basis of level and toxicity of detected pesticides were green beans, spinach, bell and hot peppers, kale, collards, and mustard greens. In addition to this list, they also produce another list they call the Clean 15. These are the fruits and vegetables that have the least amount of pesticides on them. For 2025, the cleanest items were pineapple, sweet corn, and avocado. Nearly 60% of the Clean 15 samples had no detectable pesticide residue, reinforcing the idea that pesticide use varies dramatically by crop. Now, there's a fundamental problem with the way this list is put together. It's common for the EWG to have statements like this. 96% of all dirty dozen samples contain detectable pesticide residue. This implies that our food is highly contaminated. And I can understand why the general public might get concerned. But there's a really important point here. The EWG does not look at the amount of pesticide that is detected. And today's analytical equipment is so sensitive that we can find just about any chemical wherever we look. The fact that the lab reports a value does not indicate there's a toxicity problem. Let's look at an example of why this is so important. Historically, apples have been at or near the top of this list. And the latest report has this to say about apple. Diphenylamine is a chemical used to prevent the skin of apples in cold storage from developing brown or black patches. It's applied to most non-organic or conventionally grown apples. This chemical was found on 60% of the tests conducted by the U.S. Department of Agriculture scientists of 334 raw non-organic apple samples. The tests were conducted in 2023, the most recent year for which data is available. Most of the samples came from apples grown in the U.S. The average concentration of this chemical was 0.26 parts per million. That's 
0.26 parts per million. None of the apples tested were above the safety limit, which is 10 parts per million. This is the tolerance level that the EPA has set, and it's 100-fold higher than was really safe for consumption. To put this into perspective, the average adult weighing 70 kilograms would have to eat 45 medium-sized apples every day to get to the safe level. That's not the level that causes a problem. That's the safe level. So they'd have to eat even more than that to reach any kind of toxic level. This means that these apples are perfectly safe to eat. Now the 2025 Dirty Dozen list put spinach at the top of the list. How much spinach would you have to eat to reach the safe level? You'd have to eat 145 pounds of spinach. Spinach. That's a huge, huge salad. I guess if you eat that much salad, this may be a problem for you. The average person doesn't even eat a pound of spinach. In 2023, the USDA report said 38.8% of the samples tested had no detectable pesticide. And over 99% of the samples tested had residues below the tolerances established by the EPA. So what do other experts say? Forbes had this to say. The EWG analysis is egregiously misleading because it essentially counts all detections equally, ignoring what the chemical is and at what level it was detected and how that compares to the crop chemical specific EPA tolerances. Published peer review research found that the authors of the Dirty Dozen list adhere to no scientifically established methodology. The recommendations of the EWG to substitute organic produce options for items in the list doesn't decrease the risk of exposure to residue. The EPA points out that the authors of the Dirty Dozen list do not assess risk or apply basic tenets of toxicology. The presence of a detectable pesticide residue does not mean the residue is unsafe. USDA's pesticide data program detects residues at levels far below the level that is risky. Are the dirty dozen safe to eat? Absolutely. The amount of pesticides found on those fruits and vegetables is so low that it causes no concern for your health. The suggestion that you need to buy organic is wrong. Don't let fear mongers fleece you out of your money. Thank you very much for your support. If you'd like to connect directly with me, the best way is through my Facebook group, Garden Fundamentals. We'll answer all of your questions there. I also have a blog called Garden Myths, where I've debunked over 2,000 different myths. I'll put links to all of these in the description below. Happy garden.